Radio Cosmos. Radio Cosmos. Radio Cosmos. Golden light streamed through the narrow streets of the old harbour town like a glistening arrow was pointing the way back to the natural world as the light danced upon cold ocean waves. I was wandering in between a list of errands and found myself following the light in some somnambulant haze. The cold sea breeze blew in a bracing taste of brine in my mouth that felt enlivening before my body alternated to a shiver that made me consider I had time to sit down somewhere warm for the price of a cup of tea. Turning left and then right, walking past the grey square blocks of the local corporate government, continuing past the garish plastic signs of the fast food franchises, a laneway eventually appeared that held the light like a blinding torch in a canyon. It brought me towards the seafront with small squares of grass and trees revealing the hidden earth to still be alive. I wandered on past the old church converted into a museum and onto the subtle path of a remaining 19th century cottage from the time of the old empire. I thought this place would make a good speakeasy as there was nothing inviting about approaching the place with its closed red and blue curtains that showed no signs of life. The thought flashed through my mind that if I actually went and knocked three times on the wooden door, some salty dog would appear and look at me with steely eyes that demanded in silence to hear some obscure word uttered aloud before he would reveal Aladdin's cave. The thought was like a miniature fantasy that caused me to unconsciously pause by the gate when I noticed a marmalade tabby cat had appeared and was gingerly pushing its way through the unlocked metal gate towards the wider world. It began sniffing my shoes and trousers and then wrapped itself around my legs in one flowing motion that seemed designed to make me fall over or at least provoke me to scurry it away but I bent down to rub its head that gleamed with curious eyes. Oh, don't let him out, a female voice cried. I looked up to see a young woman holding the door open with one foot while she awkwardly held a tea tray. Can you... She began to suggest as I scooped up the cat with both hands and closed the gate behind me. I offered the purring tabby to the woman as a prize offering, but instead she pulled the door wide open with her foot and said, do bring him in. He's looking for a mouse or a rat getting into our bins. But come in. Come downstairs. I dropped the cat onto his four paws and he scurried down the long corridor that led to a flight of stairs leading into what I thought was a basement. The girl automatically sashayed her legs out of the way as the cat ran ahead. The heavy wooden front door clunked into place behind us with a satisfying sound that seemed to suggest the outside world was being sealed off. The light streamed through the old cottage like a Neolithic tomb on the summer solstice, the old building revealing itself to have been built in a time before electric illumination with its windows designed to catch the daylight from the measured rotations of the sun. The golden light gave a natural warmth that blended with an open fireplace that formed some sense of cosy bubble. How did you find us? the girl asked as I found myself standing beside a boiling kettle, a whirling coffee maker and the clattering of cutlery that made me belatedly accept I was in an actual cafe and not someone's home. The Kingston Cat Cafe and Telepathic Research Centre, I joked casual smile as I took in the scene of the tabby cat climbing over an older gentleman in a leather armchair who was sorting a pile of paperback books that all had the name Ingo Swan on their creased spines. Yes, where did you hear about us? Are you here for the reading group? She inquired with all seriousness. Oh no, just a cup of tea would be nice. Uh, it's getting cold out there. 
I replied, wondering whether I was missing some strange synchronous opportunity to join a cult. I took a hot cup of pure blended lemon, ginger and chamomile tea with the letters K, C, C, A, T or C emblazoned on it with a cartoon silhouette of a black cat looking at a white fish jumping out of the purple sea beneath a full silvery moon. I went for a little wander around the cafe before deciding where I could ensconce myself in the warmth. There was a large open patio that held a man and woman dressed in all black with black sunglasses sucking on an endless chain of cigarettes. I didn't realise I was staring until they turned to meet my gaze. I thought all that was missing were matching black berets. I wandered along a large oak bookcase that was filled with the arcane and esoteric every book looking like it was a refugee from the analogue age, with their withered covers and uneven pages revealing a time before standardisation. There are many little wonders to be found if you have the patience. Gerald is my name. The older gentleman opined, appearing beside me and offering his hand to shake. I smiled and gently shook hands with a sense of a relief that no funny kind of handshake was being offered it was an actual open, warm hand to be met with my own. Are you a psychic researcher? I asked him. Are you here for the reading group? No, no, I just noticed what you were reading. Ingo Swan? Didn't he go to the moon in his mind? I mean. Oh, yes, a marvellous fellow. Really a naturally gifted chap. Only so much you could put in the books, of course, but they're a good starting point for people. Anything to provoke a good conversation, I suppose. I must say, the funny thing is, Bitcoin has been a bit of a gateway drug, as they say, for a lot of the younger chaps. Oh, how so? He piqued my curiosity. Well, everybody wants to be a remote viewer now, so they can sell themselves on YouTube. He laughed to himself. The right time to buy and sell, I wondered. Oh yes. It's like everybody trying to figure out the name of the winning horse. Does that mean it's already happened? Do you mean has everything already happened? Predestined, so to speak, and we're just waiting for the results to come in? No, no, I don't believe so. I do think we are in a fully interactive reality that it is always possible to nudge one way or the other, depending on how we feel and what we think and what we listen to on the radio. And you teach people, I asked, wondering where it was all going. Well, young man, how would you teach a person to remote view? I looked at Gerald with his arms folded and a slight twinkle of light in his eye and a bemused smile upon his face. He seemed a good-natured sort. And I wondered what kind of test this was, an intelligence test, or perhaps a psychopath's test, or just a test of knowledge. Well, what I would do, I slowly began to consider the task. I would have a set of coordinates written down to look at, and they would relate to something like perhaps a pyramid on Mars, or the Hall of Records beneath the left paw of the Sphinx. And then I give those coordinates to the remote viewer. Yes, of course, but how would the remote viewer figure it out? How would they see anything? Or are they psychic supermen living amongst mere mortals? I don't know, but I think they would have to be psychic. First of all, the remote viewer would tediously learn to break down all the most fundamental archetypes into simple drawings, such as land or earth, air, fire and water. They do the same for emotions. They draw everything out on a big whiteboard with the simplest line drawings depicting the most basic things to form a map, like a game really, but, but somehow seeing through the collective unconscious, I suppose. And if you were given the coordinates for the Hall of Records beneath the left paw of the Sphinx, how would you depict that information? I don't know, uh, I suppose a cat lying down, and a round record, and then maybe a stick man with the light bulb going off above his head. Oh, very good, old chap. You humour my parlour games. 
but I will tell you it is a very underutilized piece of organic technology. I would say we're in something of a psychic nuclear arms race in the age of Aquarius, don't you think? If you can forgive the rather gross metaphor, don't encourage him. If he thinks you've got the gift, he'll never leave you alone until you're figured out the lottery numbers. Another voice from behind joined the conversation. I turned to see it was the smoker dressed in all black who had come inside with his apparent girlfriend and matching costume standing beside him. I'm just curious, I replied casually. Like a cat, the girl said between black lipsticked lips. You came at the right time. My name is Carl with a C. This is Alexandria. Come and play our game.